is time for the Basilisk Big Brain Bouts. Big Brain Bouts, there we go. Number 14, we've got four pretty cool, awesome matches. I think a little bit different this week. I, I didn't go for like the all out top players. Just tried to make it a little more community focused. Uh, we have a few guys playing for the first time and we'll talk all about it. Our first matchup is an all American one. It's a PVT between two guys that are good friends of each other and they're honestly pretty good. So this is not like low level StarCraft. These guys are easily Grandmaster League. Oh, we need a prediction by the way. They're easily Grandmaster League. And probably pretty high up there for NA standards. I don't get to see these guys a lot, so I don't have any insight on uh, what to expect, etc, etc. Will Lino win? I don't know uh, if Lino won or not. Oh my god. I guess Lino did not win. Uh, disrespect uh, versus Holden. Disrespect Holden. I give you guys 10 minutes to get your points in, your predictions in. Best of five, obviously. New patch, new maps. First time ever that we do the big brain bouts on the new patch, by the way. And the reason for that, guys, is that I think the changes are pretty much finalized. So at this point, I feel like it's safe to do it on the new patch. Let's go ahead and have some fun with big brain bouts. Number 14. Let's get it on. Round one, fight. In the bottom right side, we're looking at the main base of a man that has been playing StarCraft on the American ladder for a very long time. I see him in some tournaments every now and then, but as I said, I really am no expert on these guys at all. So I don't know too much what to expect playstyle-wise. I just know he's good, and I know he's also good mates with the guy that he's currently playing. This is Disrespect. And it's gonna be very tempting to call him Dr. Disrespect. And we might do that every now and then, but we're not gonna do that all the way. In the top left side, we're looking at the main base of a man that mostly got invited because I saw him in one of the smaller online tournaments and he got a 2-0 victory over Baby Marine. The Team Roddy member, the younger brother of Raynor. That is very legit, guys, because Baby Marine is actually proper good in TVP. So I think this man is the favorite, but what do I know? This is Holden, the American Protoss, representing Berserker Esports. New patch, new maps, Friday Night StarCraft, and the third series of the night, guys, is going to be between Radata, who's becoming a bit of a, uh, I want to say, cult hero almost in the big brain bouts, as he's going to duke it out with Nina. And for that one, I will be joined by Trigger. So Trigger will be co-casting with me. And I think all of that is going to be a lot of fun. I'm excited. I love Friday nights. I had a rough start to the day because internet wasn't working and everything, but we've been perfectly fine now for two hours and 45 minutes. So I don't think there is anything to be nervous about. I can just relax. Lean back and enjoy StarCraft with you guys. It is never too early for the Friday Night Cheeky Drink. And for me, it's kind of a tradition to have at least one. Sometimes two. But I think today I'll keep it at one. So cheers and enjoy the Friday Night. And all the love to Basilisk, of course, guys. Because without them, I couldn't run this event. They are the ones putting up the $500 every single Friday. Is Roddy Cam a little lower resolution than usual? Camera, same resolution as always. Do I not look pretty, man? I look pretty. It might just be because it's a bit darker. Triple CC here, guys. Triple CC on Babylon, which is supposed to be one of the smaller... Uh, Maybe it's the lights, amigo. I can change the lights. The technology is there. Oh, wait. I'm not connected to the Wi-Fi because my internet was bad earlier. It's only the minimized view. No, no. It might be because we're streaming at 4K and I do that to be safe because I don't trust Ziggo at the moment. Basilisk is kind of a green-yellowish color. I don't know. Maybe these are the colors for the big brain bouts? Or we can just go for this. Or we can go for this. I think this is pretty. Let's go with this. So triple CC, double Reaper as a scout. Meanwhile, Holden, guys, is going to be a proper North American Protoss. As I said, I don't know much about these guys, but it seems that Holden is a little cheeky. Because four gate and charge first is not standard. I've seen Jumi do this build actually a couple times. I, uh, yeah, I think builds like this are very committed. Very, very, very committed. There are not too many scenarios where this game goes past the Zealot attack. 
because if you open up like this you obviously don't have a good setup to defend against widow mine drops or bio drops you kind of just need to get the job done with your war prism and your zealots the only way that this ever continues is if he kills 25 plus scvs but he's not able to end the game yeah 4 gate is kind of like middle down the road but i honestly think if you play like this it's better to do seven or eight gates because i think this is all in so you may as well properly commit them my cheeky little first friday night drink and it tastes great guys i'm feeling it i love it how many uh marines do we have 10 marines there's no bunker in the main base one of the marines just popped and it's going to die all right 11 marines against eight zealots that's going to be tough not impossible though SCVs are good in soaking up uh some damage in the natural we're doing great but mate the main base the main base the main base disrespect a little bit late to respond to those three zealots in the main I think he lost a few more SCVs there than he's supposed to. But he won't die. Like, the game is not ending. But this is a lot of damage, though. Hmm. Okay, maybe this is one of these unique scenarios where Holden just does the damage he was looking for, and we're going to take it from here. Reaper hops into the main base, gets a probe. Can I get the double kill? Can I get the double kill? One time. One time only. Double kill. Can I get a hat trick though? That's the real question. Oh! Hat trick! Okay, so great Reaper, but we on the other side of the map, the Zealots. But now Stim is ready, and once Stim is ready, it's so much easier to deal with these Zealots. And yeah, that's actually pretty good for disrespect. Everything that just happened in the last minute, well, last 30 seconds, was amazing for disrespect. Kills three probes with a single Reaper, and on top of that, he picks up a couple of Zealots at home. Storm, by the way. This is uh, this is shaping up to be a game, guys. Don't normally see the TVPs like this six minutes in, but I don't hate what I'm seeing. Disrespect is floating some money. This would be a perfect moment to just drop two extra barracks, drop a second eBay, drop an armory. Well, we have no gas for the armory, but we have gas for all these other things. This is one of the SC2 games ever. Yes, this game is officially played in the history of StarCraft 2. It is now a part of StarCraft 2 history. For good reasons, bad reasons, or irrelevant reasons, we don't know yet, but it is part. Every game in the big brain bouts is part of SC2 history. It's obviously a cool opportunity for these guys. $75 on the line for the first series of the night. 60 bucks for the winner and 15 for the loser. And they both seemed very excited. Did not have to do any convincing. I just asked and they said, yep, I'm in, let's go. I was like, all right, awesome. Hello, Foxer. What do you say, Foxer? A little Foxer appearance next week? I'd be down for it. I might actually have a great opponent for you. But I, th it will be tough. How would you do against Mindo? Foxer against Mindo VK. Is that doable? Foxer, or is that too much? Storm, by the way. Storm is ready. Storm is ready. And Storm is big. Clips a whole bunch of Marines immediately. Like, the rest of the army is still going to be a bit awkward here, but obviously that will, those were storms were good. And once the Archons are ready, this is going to be very hard. Disrespect needs these Widow Mines. He needs a couple of extra units. The bio positioning here, though, is very sexy. Like, this is, this is Sparta over here. These guys are holding down the line, and we do have a bunker. We have a couple of Widow Mines now here in the uh, natural, too. Wow, that's actually a hold. What looked like it could have been game over immediately is going to turn into a hold. It is not just any hold. It's actually a full cleanup. I do think that maybe Holden dropped the ball there a tiny bit. Can we save the Archon? No, we cannot. Yeah, Holden fought a little bit too long in this choke point. He probably thought you have nothing left, but no. Enough was left to pick up five or six Zealots. And the Archons didn't really participate in the fight. 64 workers against 62. Disrespect now with a pretty hefty army supply lead, though. And the ghosts are on the way. Yeah. I, uh... I'm starting to like this more and more for disrespect. I think he was in trouble. And he was in trouble again. But he survived. And this is not the kind of army that you clean up easily. Holden is now trying to transition into double robe under robo bay. But we all know that it takes a little while to go online. I think we're going to have to let go of this Nexus. War Prism is looking for maybe something in the main base. Just creating some chaos and forcing Disrespect to turn home. Or turn around and go home would be big. 
Uh, what up, cat dude? The Maker's Mark, man. Maker's Mark 46 is what we have today. But just one. Maybe when Trigger joins, we have one more. Who knows? Couple of Marauders, Widow Mines, and Marines still active on the other side of the map. But two Colossus are on the way. And if these two Colossus come out, then this game is still far from over. I think I've been a bit traumatized from having a lot of short games. So now I'm like, is it over? Is it over? But... These guys doing a good job in making sure. It oh, probes, probes, probes. A bit of a probe massacre. Not being able to get a fourth base up is obviously annoying, but with three bases, you can definitely support double robo. It'd be very cool right now to put a couple of High Templars inside of the prism and maybe try to fly into the natural and do some storm drops. I know it's ambitious, but I think there is a chance. Solid first game, guys. 11 minutes in. Both of them making their way into the latest stages of a TVP and trying to establish a fourth base. Okay, Thermal Lens is a tiny bit late, but I think we can forgive uh, Holden for that because obviously it's been a hectic game. It's been a lot of trading and a lot of battling. It's a terrifying Terran army. It is doable for the Protoss, I think, to win this fight, but we need some Storms. Without any Storms, it's going to be very hard. War Prism comes in from the bottom. Not bad. Not bad, but is it good enough? Quite a few Marauders are still alive, and the Marauders are so good, especially since the Colossus are derping around that little corner there, or the ledge. Rock, flowers, trees, monument, whatever it is. Colossus were having a hard time getting around it. And obviously, without Thermal Lens, they can't really utilize their full range potential. Good job with the War Prism, though, coming in from the bottom. It's actually not easy to do that stuff. Like, we all know that that is the right way to do it. But then you do it yourself, and it's very easy to get overwhelmed and make a misclick or just kind of mess it up. I don't think Holden messed it up there. Well, one thing is for sure, these guys are pretty evenly matched. Does not look like we're looking at a 3-0 here for either party. Because even if Disrespect wins this game... He got so close to being in all sorts of trouble, not once, but twice. A uh, couple of disruptors on the way. Holden still has a chance, but obviously at this point he's being outmined. Upgrade's not looking ultra hot. Libra is going to be annoying. Armies are getting dangerously close to each other. Seems like both players are paying attention. I'm actually still getting used to these maps, guys. I don't know all the rocks and something. I'm like, oh, there are rocks here. Stalkers come in from the bottom. That's nice. Sniper Liberator. Three Stalkers go down, but I still think picking off a lip there is okay. Ooh, this is not okay. Holden, Holden, Holden. Loses two Disruptors for absolutely nothing. Seems like he has them on a separate control group, which indicates that he's playing complicated Starcraft. He's not just f 2 his way around like Roddy would. Now losing those two disruptors is a very big deal. The supplies have heavily swung in favor of disrespect. Stalkers will take care of this liberator, but this Terran army is still here. Disruptor count only at 1 0 high Templars. We need some big balls, guys. We need some big balls. First one does not go up. Second one is good. I don't know if one big connection is good enough there. Good job here with the Widow Mines leaving those behind. Good job with the Observer as well, cleaning it up. Yeah, this fourth base still in all sorts of trouble. Seems that Disrespect does not want to gun it done though. He wants to turn around and fight the army instead. Get some Zealots, get some Stalkers, but he does not get the Nexus. He's so rich by the way, jeez Louise. 4k, 2k in the bank. This man is balling. 82 SCVs, a bunch of Orbitals. He's gonna stim forward one more time. And the Nova actually blows up Stalkers, does not get any Terran units. And I think it's safe to say that if we look at the minimap, it is just a matter of seconds before we can say that reinforcements have arrived and once that is happening i uh, i think we can end this game i think game one will go in favor of disrespect but hey holden played well and he got very very close he got very close to getting the job done so i, I don't know if like babylon is one of the better protoss maps out there either i have not played too many games yet on the new maps but if i look at this map I would say this is probably one of the maps that Terran players are going to enjoy against Protoss. More than Protoss players are going to enjoy it against Terran. Uh, 
Nah, it's very a silly comment, Seaburg. Very silly comment. You know, sometimes people talk about being banned in channels and whatnot. It's pretty hard to get banned in my channel, but one thing I will never tolerate. I don't just ban immediately. I give warnings most of the time, but don't shit on these players. Like, they're here. They're doing their best. It's obviously nervous. There's some money on the line. There's people watching. Be nice. They're doing their best. Mistakes are going to be made, but I actually think Holden played a perfectly fine game. So for you to say that he is not good is stupid. The man 2-0 Baby Marine a couple weeks ago. Baby Marine is a 6k European Terran. If you're not good anymore when you can 2-0 6k Terrans, then nobody is good in this game other than Sero, Maru and Raynor. So don't be that guy. It's not hard to be nice, mate. Nova flies forward, does not connect with units. Disrespect is now going to split up his army. Look at that bank, by the way. Look at that bank. This man is absolutely balling out of control. 6k, 2.5k. One Nova! Oh, whiffs. Ah, not even the best Novas, I think, at this point are going to save you. Disrespect doing his job to avoid these Novas. There's so many of them, so obviously some of them are going to connect. I like the way that he's on this very Marauder Heavy here, which is absolutely fantastic against all these Stalkers. Disruptor gets sniped, Stalkers get picked off, Colossus dies. And that will be all C wrote for game number one. Game one goes in favor of Disrespect. Triple CC of the get-go, but I think it's safe to say he had to work for it. That was not a one-sided game. Uh, I enjoyed it, and hopefully you guys uh, did too. Solid way to start the night, guys. It's always nice when game one is a 16-minute game. With a little bit of back and forth. Makes me happy. Yeah. And let's see what the second map is going to be. I should probably disable this. Win me some points so I can throw Roddy in twos again. I like playing twos with you, mate. Don't worry. Uh, Seaburg, mate. Once more, I already gave you a warning. You might know what you're talking about, but if you're saying that this guy is not good, you don't really know what you're talking about. And on top of that, you're being very rude. And just don't be rude to these players. It's so stupid. Uh, nobody is saying that Disrespect and Holden are Reina, Saru, or Maru. But you don't have to be. People can compete on different levels. These guys are good. They are high Grandmaster League players. Once more, show a tiny bit of respect. Hmm. Hmm. They're ready for game two. I'm ready for game two. Let's do it. Hello, hello, yo. Did you figure out the extra match? No, because it didn't happen before. And even 10 p.m. seems to be too late for Mindo. But I will make it up to Mindo. I will be a good man to Mindo. Oh, my God. Mate, you're actually making me malt. And I already don't have too many hairs left. I'm a 35-year-old man who deals with Twitch chat every single day. You're making me malt. Stop it. You're, you're being... How old are you? Are, are you 12? If that's the case, then I understand the way you're acting right now. But if you're not 12, move on. Round two. Fight. In the top left side of Gresvan, we are looking at the main base of the American Terran, who's taking the 1-0 lead over the Baby Marine Slayer. This is disrespect. In the bottom right side, we're looking at the main base of the American Protoss, representing Berserker Esports. We got the invite because he got a 2-0 over my baby marine. And that is very impressive. And a cool build in game one. This is Holden. Mm. Not Dr. Disrespect, guys. To be honest, Dr. Disrespect has been complaining a lot of... Uh, has been complaining a lot. About the battle royales and the shooters. And how they just ma don't make good games anymore. So I personally think that Dr. Disrespect should try to play some StarCraft 2. That'd be pretty good for a scene. Because <coughs> this may be a 12 year old game. But it's still a good game. The dog is finally an SC2. Yeah, we'll get the dog. We'll get Ninja. We'll get Pokimane. Valkyrie. StarCraft 2 would be booming, guys. It's never too late to stop believing. 
I now see that FaZe Clan is sponsored by Porsche. So maybe one of these guys wants to play some StarCraft 2 with us. You're all that SE2 needs, Roddy. That's very sweet of you, mate, but... I just want to get this on the record. If you guys could ever trade me in for Dr. Disrespect, please do it in a heartbeat. It'd be good for the scene. No matter how hard I will try, I don't think I can ever get that many eyeballs. So trade me in and don't look back. <laughs> you know, send me a kiss on my way out, but just say like, all right, thanks, Roddy. Thanks for the efforts, but we've got the dog now. And I have peace with that. It's okay. Second barracks. Are we going to three Rex over here? Oh, no. I don't like where this is going, guys. Because I have never seen this build loose. You guys have never seen this build loose. I don't think Holden has ever seen this build loose. Here I was thinking that there was a uh, fine print in the Big Brain Bouts contracts that we present to the players whenever they agree to play. They sign it. And I believe that one of the things says you're not allowed to 3 Rex. I don't know, maybe I misread the contract. There are no contracts to play in this tournament, guys. I'm just joking. But if there was, I would put it in there. One Adept is going to run to the other side of the map. And there are three Marines waiting for it. Very good Marine positioning. Can we get the kill? We cannot get the kill. But the positioning is good. This is already a decent scout though. I think if you're holding. And you see five Marines and a reactor like this. I do think the alarm bells need to go off a little bit. Now, if you guys are wondering already what you, should you do here. If you think it's three Rex. I don't know. Tell your family you love them. Kiss your wife or your husband and your children goodbye. And know that this is the end of you. You've got 90 more seconds to live. You can also go for a battery or a second battery. And then a guardian shield, three gate. You pop the guardian shield. Oh no, we got charge again. Very good charge. I don't think this is good, guys. I don't think this is good. Alright, well, we got the, the, the confirmed scout right now, but what do we even do? Now that we know that it's coming, what do we do? A couple zealots are not going to win the fight against three Rex. A supply blocked as well for a split second. He's going war prism regardless. The man is crazy. The man is crazy. Holden has absolutely zero respect for the three Rex. I can't believe what I'm watching. <laughs> He looks at True Rex and he says, all right, bring it on. We'll fight units with units. He's getting one battery now, so that's nice. But even just a couple Zealots are really not going to be that great. Because True Rex has micro potential and Zealots just do not. We have no War Prism. Oh, excuse me, we have no Immortal, no Sentry. I think we're so dead. Game 1 was pretty awesome between these two. I think that the Protoss is ultra dead here. He's going up to three bases. Holden has absolutely zero respect for the three Rex. And he's just hoping that disrespect is going to turn around once he sees these zealots. I don't see any reason for disrespect to ever turn around. But yeah, let's see if he does. Will disrespect go home? I mean, a lot of SCVs are going to die. Uh, that is That much is obvious. Right, shield battery overcharge for a split second is obviously not going to make the difference. I mean, these zealots. Okay, the bunker. No, don't. Why would you leave the bunker, by the way? That's crazy, but I guess it's okay. The thing is, guys, these Zealots are eventually going to die. But these Marines and Marauders, I don't think will ever die. Even though we warped in a couple of Zealots, we pulled the probes. We, we stopped pulling the probes. I mean, a lot of workers have died on both sides. But the Terran army is better than the Protoss army. And I don't think there is anything that the Protoss can do here. If Maybe if we had like an Immortal and a Sentry and another Battery in the main base, there would be a tiny chance. But uh, like this, there is just no chance. Too much DPS, too much firepower in the three Rex. Can't believe it. You're having a fun time and then they start three Rexing. Unbelievable scenes. It, sh it should not be allowed, guys. Roddy, why is the man with the gun so good? Because you can get a lot of them in a very short time. I think that's the main reason why the guy with the gun is so good. Hmm? Lyric, yeah, Lyric is a StarCraft 2 fan. That is correct. Lyric has played a decent amount of StarCraft 2 over the years. Has he ever used a camera, by the way? Because like, I know that for the last few years, I don't think he ever has a camera on. He has never, never, sh never shown himself, ever. It is a complete mystery how he looks. That's kind of intriguing. 
What if Lyric is Max Specs? Have you guys ever seen Lyric and Max Specs in the same stream? Ah, okay. Subs get camera? I don't think that's how it works. <laughs> He's showing his face? Okay. Does he look Danish? He used to, yeah, okay. I figured. Hmm. Did Holden do okay? The first game he absolutely did okay, unfortunately. Yeah, the second game. I think that's a very tough build to go up regardless. You guys all know. That as a man who plays StarCraft every single day, I still struggle with the three wrecks. And I think he got a bit overly ambitious. Going up to three bases and sending an opening prism. I think he should have gone for two base setup and make an immortal. And then make a couple of gateway units and pray that you hold. Let's go ahead and hop into game three. Of our first best of five of the night here at the Big Brain Belts. Round three. Fight. Hello, hello. Hey, Spanish Goat. Thank you so much, Mady, for the 24 months in the tier three. I super appreciate it. In the top right side of Ancient Cistern, we're looking at the main base of the American Terran. Who's just up to no good, guys? First game, some triple CC, right? He's like, hey, we're going to macro. Ruddy's watching. We're in here for a good time. Game two, he's two, uh, three rexing. Game three, he's sending out the boys. I, I gotta say, this is not how you handle a mate, but this is disrespect. Representing Apprentice Esports, by the way. I gotta give those guys some love. Sorry, I did not mention that yet. Bottom left side, I'm rooting for this guy because we don't like three O's in the big brain belts. This is the American Protoss player. Representing Berserker Esports, it's Holden. He's scouting. It's an early scout. We have not expended yet. We don't need to expend. We could. But we don't need to. He scouts a refinery so he knows that it's not all out marine all in. What is it going to be then, by the way, guys? I mean, it's still going to be marines into factory, I guess, right? Hold on. We'll just drop the Nexus. He drops the Nexus while not making a Zealot. It's not impossible to hold this by just chrono boosting out your stalker and pulling a lot of SC, uh, a lot of probes. But if you mess up the defense, the series ends immediately. It will be all over. So uh, this is a dicey scenario, guys. No, that that's not enough probes. I never like pulling this amount of probes. I I, I just don't like it. He goes for the adapt as well. Oh oh oh. Game 1 was so good. We were off to such a good start, but I really don't think that anything is working out for Holden at this point. We need to prevent the bunker from finishing up. He gets one SCV, gets the second SCV, okay. Is there a third SCV out on the map? I don't think there is. Okay, one more miss rally throw, that's gonna suck. Wow, he goes sentry. This is such a bizarre defense. I would never, ever, ever defend adept sentry. Uh, Holden uh, seems confident. Like you would always think that a stalker is by far in the way the best unit here, because the stalker has micro potential. The adapt is a bit, a bit derpy. Holden now already down five workers. Is that an SCV? This is an SCV, guys. This is an SCV and it's going to try to finish up the bunker. We need to prevent the SCV at all costs. Oh my goodness. It's a disaster. We do drop a force field, but it is a little bit too late. Holden loses 11, 12, 13 probes. And killing this bunker is going to be a straight up nightmare. I don't understand. I do not understand the adept sentry defense here if we would have just gone for a stalker it would have been completely okay now I am afraid that this is going to be GG that's a shame guys because the first game was actually very good nice 16 minute game game 2 3 racks game 3 unfortunately we did not handle the proxy 2 racks well it's a gnarly build uh, you can obviously lose against it you can mess up the defense and that is just what happened here but I don't think the unit choice was correct there. I, I would not. I would never go for Adept Sentry. That's unfortunate because the first game was actually really fun. And that does mean that we kicked things off with a 3-0 tonight. It means Roddy has failed. I apologize to that. And the second and third game very short. Ah, that's okay. Never be sorry, mate. You did your best. All that matters. Game one was... 
Terran belts. In game two and game three. Holden says, I swear that was not my best, and he apologizes. Obviously, I never want players to apologize for uh, yeah, what they felt was a bad series. I still enjoyed the first game. Obviously, game two and game three, there wasn't much to it. That's StarCraft, right? That's with every sport in life. Uh, sometimes it's great, sometimes it's not great. But I never want the guys to feel guilty. Everybody's doing their best, and obviously there is nerves, there is pressure. So it is what it is. Mm-mm. And uh, Holden can keep his head up. We'll give him another chance in the future against somebody else. And we'll definitely give Disrespect another chance as well against somebody else. He gets a little step up in competition. And we will take it from there. So yeah. that's, uh, that's going to do it already for our first series. We are now 20 minutes ahead of schedule. Can't wait. Uh, GG's mate. But the three racks, the proxy two racks, unbelievable scenes. But nah. A win is a win, amigo. That's all that matters. So... GG's, well done. And uh, we'll see you next time. Congratulations with your $60 Renos. I'm going to go ahead and hop over to our European server. Thank you, Amigo, for the Prime as well. We'll hop over to the European server and see if the next players are already ready or if they need a couple of minutes. I guess I can always take a little break after the series. Thanks to the Basilisk Research Group for the 10 subs. But more importantly, guys, thanks to Basilisk for running this event every single friday because without them i could not do it second series of the night uh also a bit of a weird one since we are a bit ahead of schedule i can talk to you guys about it soon is a german terran that i'm honestly not that familiar with but i played him a decent amount on the ladder he seems good he seems very motivated and those are exactly the kind of players that i want to see in the big brain belts give them an opportunity to win some money and he's gonna duke it out with Ari Story, a Polish Zerg that has already played a couple of times. And if I recall correctly, I think Ari Story won the first time and lost the second time. But we can just go ahead and take a look at the history quickly. I know that he lost the last time he played, but I don't know if he played one time before that. Number 11 maybe it was? Ari Story, yep. Ari, no, yeah, Ari Story lost 3-1 to one against uh, the youngster from Belarus that's wanna be beyond. And did Ari Story play before that? I'm going to have to look it up. I've shown a lot of love to the Polish Zergis, Ari Story and Trifax. But mostly Trifax. <laughs> the big T. I guess that was the first time that Ari Story played. So the first one didn't go his way. And let's see how his uh, second appearance in the BBB will be. So that's the TVC, guys. It's going to come up soon. I'm going to go ahead and take a little break. It's going to be three to four minutes. And after that, we'll be back. I'll give you guys some time to get your channel point predictions in. And I'll settle the previous one. I'll see you guys soon.